In this video, I'll be using Napier's rods in order to take square roots. So we have Napier's rods, or bones here, as they're called. We'll also need an extra rod or plate, and this is the square root rod. What it has on it is the squares, the perfect squares. On the far side, on the right, it has just the digits 1 through 9, and in the middle it has the doubles. Really, the only thing that we need is this first column and I'll talk later about why these other two columns are helpful. So the first problem that we're going to work is to find the square root of 1024. We begin by writing our number and splitting it into doublets. So 1024, we're going to put a point here and that's just a divider, it's not actually a decimal point. What we do is we start with our square root rod, and we can just be focused on the left-hand column of that rod. So I'm even just going to cover up the other parts. What we're looking for is the smallest perfect square that will, or not the smallest, the, the closest perfect square to 10 without going over. So I've got 1, 4, 9, and then we have a 16. So we're going to go with the 9. And that is 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. So the first part of our answer is 3. We're going to subtract and bring down. Now to do the next step, what we need to do is take the first digit of our answer and double it. That gives us a 6. And what that 6 does is it tells us what rod to bring in next. Now, I said I'd mention why we have these two columns. Napier's bones are intended to allow you to carry out mathematics without having to do any multiplication. So if you don't know your multiplication facts, there's a handy reference here. 3 times 2 is 6. And so we could get the 6 from right there. So that's what those last two columns are for. We always put the new rod in the front of the square root rod. So now I'm looking for something close to 124 without going over. I've got 61. Oh, and right here I've got 124. We add along diagonals. 1's place is 4. 10's place is 0 plus 2, which is 2. And the 100's place is a 1. That goes in evenly. And we are looking at the number 2 here. So that's the second part of our answer. We've completed the problem, and so the square root of 1024 is 32. And we're going to take on a couple more problems so that you can really get the idea of how to do this. So I'm going to reset the frame, and the next problem we'll do is 46,656. We want to find the square root. So again, I write the number down. And I want to break it up into groups of two. So I've got two dots this time. I wanted to use a number with an odd number of digits so you could see where to start your groups of two from. We start that from the right. We may have a single digit left out front, but that's okay. Again, we look at the right column of the square root rod and we find the perfect square, which is closest to four without going over. And we see that two squared is actually four. That goes in evenly. So the first part of our answer is a two. Okay. In order to find the next rod that we need to use, we double the two and we get a four. And that four goes right in front of the squares, the square root rod. We go ahead and bring down. Didn't really need the zero out front. We've got 66. So looking here, I've got 129. I've got 84. Oh, I've got a 41. The 84 is too big. So we're looking at number one row, which is 41. When we subtract, we get 25 and we're going to bring down. I record the number 1 as the next part of my answer. And to find my next step, the next rod I'm going to use, I double the 1. 
this tells me what rod I'm going to use. So I'm going to grab a two rod, and that two rod goes in between these two others. You're always placing the new rod right in front of the square root rod. So now we're looking for something close to 2,556 without going over. This is a 421 and 844. We need to keep going. And as I look here next to the 6, I see in the 1's place a 6. In the 10's place, 2 plus 3 is 5. In the 100's place, 4 plus 1 is 5. And then we've got a 2 in the 1,000's place. That goes in exactly. And this was a 6. So the result is that the square root of 46,656 is 216. This is our answer right here. So we're going to do two more problems. Um, this next one has a little bit of a twist to it. We have 233,289. I will reset the frame. We again write our number, splitting it up into doublets starting from the back. We start with just the square root rod, which has the perfect squares in the first column. I look for a perfect square closest to 23 without going over. Well, 25 is too big, so we'll use 16, which is 4 squared. So 4 is the first part of my answer. We do the subtraction, and we bring down. In order to continue the work, I double the 4, which means I'll be using an 8 rod. I'll be placing that right in front of the square root rod. And now I'm looking for the closest thing to 732 without going over. And so let's see, we're going to have a carry here. Actually, this one's going to be okay. Um, this bottom row would be too high because 8 plus 2 is 10. I'd carry the 1 and get something in the 800s. But if I go up here, I've got a 4 in the 1s place, a 10 in the 10s place, so I'll carry that 1 to the 5. No, the 6. It's a 6. And get a 7. So we do the subtraction and we get 28. Notice that this came from row 8. So that's going to be the next part of our answer. Now here's where the twist comes in. If you double 8, you get 16, right? Here's our handy reference. If you double an 8, you get a 16. So that tells me what rod I'm supposed to place in here next. But due to issues of place value, I can't actually stick two rods in there. That's not going to work out in terms of our place value. So what we're going to do is move the square root rod over and make a space for this. The 6 is going to slide in there, but then we're going to basically do a carry. 8 plus 1 is 9. And I'm going to do a replacement. Because at each step we only want to add one more rod into it. Not more than one. If there's more than one, you're going to carry. So I subtracted. I'm going to bring down. And again, I'm looking for the number in here closest to this one without going over. And I see that right here next to the number 3. That actually is 2,889. It goes in evenly because this number was a perfect square. And so the square root of 233,289 is... 483. And I'd like to do one more that gets into, well, what happens if the number you started with isn't a perfect square? Um, what if you need to get some decimal numbers? And our example there is simply going to be the square root of 2. So you start in the same way. I only have a single digit here. So I can't really get any doublets. I look for the closest thing without going over. It's going to be 1 squared is 1. And so the first part of our answer is a 1. In order to push over into the decimals, I'm going to start adding 
two zeros. We're always going by doubles. That is not a decimal point. It's still just that dot that's separating um, pairs of numbers. So we double the one to find out what rod we're going to be using next. We place the rod next to the square root rod and we bring down our zeros looking for the number closest to 100 without going over. That's going to be right here. I'm reading off a 96. So 4 is the next part of our answer. Okay. And if I want to continue, I just put two more zeros and I continue the process. 4 doubled is 8. That tells me what the next rod is to use. I will place that rod right in front of the square root rod. I bring down the two zeros. I look for the number closest to 400 without going over. And that's going to be right up here, 281. It's already too big if we go below that. Okay, so that came from row one. And again, we would double to find the next um, rod that we would use. We place it here. Remember that these other columns are for your doubling, so if you're not sure what the double of one is, you can just look right over here, and you can read that off. So we need to do our subtraction. So we have 119. Let's bring down two more zeros. And that looks to me like it's going to be the closest right here because of the carry with the 8 plus 3, which is going to give us an 11 out front. So we have a 6, a 9, a 2, and an 11. And that came from row 4. And if we wanted to continue, we would subtract we would place another two zeros and we would just continue the process. So the answer as we have it this far is, well, I've got a 1414. The question is, where do I put the decimal? And since I started adding these zeros right after our first step, the decimal is going to go right after that first digit. So the square root of two is approximately 1.414. In case you're wondering why this works the way that it does, I'm just going to briefly show you some algebra that goes along with this. We can think of, um, if we're squaring a two-digit number, for instance, um, 32 was squared to give us 1024. You can think of the digit in the tens place as being A and the digit in the ones place as being B, and then square it. If you expand that, you get this expression. And if you gather up the terms and do a little bit of factoring, what happens is you get a times a, that's the first square we're looking for. You'll notice a two times a here. That's where we were doubling to get a rod that we were going to use. Notice that we always keep the square root rod at the back that has the perfect squares. That's because in each step, we're going to have a number times itself, or a square. And I've written this out one step further. Let's say we have a three-digit number, hundreds place, tens place, ones place. I've done the expansion, and then I've gathered up the term. So everything that just has an A in it is out front in red. Everything that has Bs but not Cs is here in the middle, and everything that has Cs is here in the back. You'll notice again the twos for doubling. We're going to get a b squared here and a c squared here. Again, why we keep the squares at the back. And you can just continue with this process if you want to look at a four-digit number. You know, you'd need to multiply that all out and then gather up the terms. And so I'm going to leave it at that and let you think about that if you're interested in trying to go deeper with why is it that this works? Why am I doubling? Why do I keep having this, these squares at the back?